lost it in a car. It was. Like you, when you usually plot the line, graph, in bio, they allow us to connect the dots. Yeah, but it depends what's on the x-axis. So it's time on the x-axis. Yeah. So then it's not a scatter plot, it's a, a line graph. And line graphs, you're allowed to connect the points because what you're trying to see is how something varies over time. Whereas with the scatter plots, what you're trying to do is see how two variables are related. So I know it might not seem like it matters, but the, with uh, the line plots, you know, if you have something like this, then you can see that it fluctuates up and down over time. So if you just connect them as a straight line, you don't see that. Part C. Yep, yep. Two current per health. Two part C? Yeah. You said estimate the gradient which is slow. Oh yeah, so just do what you learned in chapter one. Take two points off the line and get the M and the C. Ahmed, come on. Get off the phone. You finished everything? Right, anyways, we'll continue now. Oh. Just let me finish the points. Okay, one more minute. Marked off your average. This is my average. Right, so how many points have you got? Ten? Yeah. So we want. Well, no, we don't count that because you made that one up. Uh, ten points originally. So you want to try and get five below. So let me see. I've got like five below. No, that's six below, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it one, two, one, two, yeah. three, four, five, six? So five. I want to try and knock one of them out. So if I just. Uh, uh, it's, it's hard to because I'll knock two out if I go this way. Oh, but I'll get one in, actually. If I knock those two out, what have I got there? One, two, there, there you go, there's five. Oh, no, I've just gotten a sixth one in there. So, there. Try not to get that one. Looks pretty good to me. Now, if you compare it with the answer, where's the answer? Here it is here, isn't it? So you can see... For this point here, my line is slightly above, which is what you've got there. Mm -hmm. And then towards the center, you see this one passes in the middle of these three, slightly above mm -hmm. the middle one, which is exactly what you have here, you mm -hmm. see? Uh, and then towards the end, it kind of uh, it lies in between these four, which uh, we kind of roughly have going on here. Mm -hmm. So actually, this is quite good for a process which is by sight, uh, meaning estimating it by hand. Mm -hmm. And we'll actually learn uh, a way to calculate now the line precisely. But I wanted to show you that you can actually get a pretty good guess at it. Like that's, this I did in a computer program, so this is exactly the right answer, precisely. That's not, you know, that's not exactly different. It's quite good. Yeah. Ready now? Okay. Okay, let's, let's continue now. All right, we'll continue now. Uh, continuing now, guys, continuing. So, um, we'll just fill in another box here of data. Um, we'll, do, um, we'll do an economic example because 
like in the exam, I don't know what type of question they'll pick. Like they'll they'll probably pick a science example, but they don't have to. Um, it doesn't really matter. You know, you're just plotting it. So we'll do uh, we'll do an economics example. So we'll have. Just the next lesson. Yeah, but I'm just I just want to make up one example so I can show you the formula. Uh, so we'll measure unemployment. So these are how many people are out of work. And that is measured as a percentage, of course. So we'll have something like, a, I don't know, we'll say 5, 6, 4, 2, and 10. Uh, and then the other thing we'll measure is something called uh, inflation. So I'll call that I. And that's also measured as a percentage. Uh, what is inflation? Who knows that? Yeah. Price increases, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so we'll say here it's one, um, we'll say two, three, what was the first one of the three, and uh, we'll say six here. They're both percentages. The first one's unemployment, and the other one is inflation. Over what Oh, so we've done it for one, two, three, four, five years. So maybe this could be like year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, as an example. So you can see a uh, change in there, but we're not concerned about that. We're just making the scatter plot. Okay. Inflation is one. What's that? Unemployment is ten. When inflation is one percent, unemployment is ten uh, percent. Yeah. You know, this is actually accurate. Okay. Um, which way around do you think is the X and which is the Y? X is the inflation. Which way is it, do we think? So, okay. I suppose the class will be split half and half. So, people who think unemployment goes here, what's the reason? If you could give a reason. I said, I have a 50 50 chance, so. <laughs> No, it's inflation. I just want to hear from the people who think you goes here first, unemployment. So does anyone have a reason why they think that might go there? No. So am I right in thinking most people are thinking it should be inflation? Uh, okay, so what's the reason there? Well, Mo first, go ahead. If inflation increases, unemployment should increase as well. Okay, and you're thinking? Unemployment is dependent on... Inflation, yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I think because inflation and then prices increase, employees will no longer become employees. Yeah. Actually, five. Yeah. I think I think unemployment should be the x-axis. And what's the reason for that? And the reason for that is so I feel like inflation is driven. Uh, I was reading about on this. I'm not sure. Inflation is driven by how much money is made in the year. Unemployment. Yes. To how much money is being made. More or less, you have it right. You have it right. It's unemployment that goes on the X and inflation that comes from the Y. What? I was right. You were right, but you didn't give me a reason, though. I think uh, no, no, but I'd like to know if you were thinking about it correctly. So look, it's like what the example we did with the experiment, okay? On the X is the thing that changes, and on the Y is the response that you measure. So what happens is people come into work and out of work all the time for many reasons. So, for example, maybe in this country a large coal factory, coal plant closed, or maybe um, a new, I don't know, a new pharmaceutical industry opened up or something. So the unemployment changes for many reasons we don't know. And the inflation is what responds to that. If there are more people in work, that means the unemployment is low. If there's more people working, then that means there's more money. If there's more people spending more money, then shops can increase their price. So when the unemployment is high, it means there's not much money to go around. So shops can't increase their price. So that's why the inflation is low. So it has an opposite relationship. It's opposite. 
It's inverse relationship, okay? So, what we'd like to do now is, I'll just very roughly plot it. Um, so, read out the numbers to me. What's the first? Uh, we'll go up to 10 here, and the other one, inflation, will go up to, uh, we'll go up to 6 here. So, what's the first one? 5 and 3. The next one? 6 and 2. So, you see it's going down. 4 and 3. Two and six would be like up here. Ten. Ten and one would be here. So can you see how it's uh, decreasing that? So we want to cal oh yeah, we want to calculate this line. Uh, so in a moment now we'll work out how to get the a and the b. Y equals a plus b x. This is the same as y equals m x plus c, but in this chapter we use the letters a and b, and I'll give you the formula for a and b in a moment. But first. A message for them or for me? I just wanted to ask them something right Oh, me? Outside? Um, yeah, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. While you're, you're sitting there, draw it neatly in your notebook, okay? Make a neat copy of this. formula we have to calculate a couple of things first that we need for the formula so um, which is the X here this is X and this is Y yep, yep. we need to calculate for the formula S X that just means you add up all the uh, X values so if you can do that please just add up all the X values 27. 27? Yeah. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Okay, give me the SY next now. Okay. Yep, now the next one you'll need to get is what's called. Turn around. Turn around. Pretend like you're in maths class. No, no, fully, fully. There we go. That's it. There we go. Right, S, X, X now. Uh, so that is the sum of X multiplied by itself. In other words, the sum of X squared. So that would be 5 squared plus 6 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared plus 10 squared. So can you add that all up, please? 5 squared, 6 squared, 4 squared, 2 squared, and 10 squared. 181. Okay. It's five, squared five squared plus six squared plus four squared plus two squared plus ten squared. One eighty one. Okay, and you'll also need S Y Y. So that would be uh, three squared plus two squared plus three squared plus six squared plus one. So that's nine four nine thirty six. What is it? Fifty nine. And the last one you'll need for the formula is this one. S X Y. What do you think that one is? Multiply. Yeah. So it would be five times three plus. 6 times 2 plus 4 times 3 plus 2 times 6 plus 10 times 1. Students. 61. Yeah. And the last thing here is, it's not a calculation, we should write down how many points we have. So how many points do we have on this graph? Five. Five points. Okay. No, no, different, different. Uh, sorry, I, my handwriting is that 59, isn't it? Yeah, yeah okay. Right, uh, please write those down and I'll give you the formula now for calculating the A and the B here. You all have that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So, uh, the formula for calculating the A 
is, and don't worry, these formulas, of course, are in the formula book. It's n sxy minus sxsy over n sxx minus sx squared. And then the b formula is sy over n minus uh, a, your answer you got for a, sx over n. Now let's, uh, let's calculate these together. So uh, what's the n, did we say? Five. Five. And the s, x, y? Sixty-one. Sixty-one? Was it? Uh, s, x? S, x was twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. And s, y? Fifteen. Okay. And then five? S, x, x? One eighty-one. One eighty-one minus... Uh, 27 squared, sx squared. Yeah, it's a square. It's okay? So when you're ready, you can give me the answer for the A. By s squared, f by sx squared. Yeah, the answer for sx squared. squared. Yeah. I no, no, no. Uh, you might be, don't mix it up with SXX. Yeah. yeah, 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 they're different. Minus 25 point. Uh, over. Oh, yeah, give me the final answer once you have it then. Minus 0 0.568. Three significant figures. Okay, so the B now. Um, sorry, my handwriting there. That's SY, if you think that's an X, that's SY. So SY is 15 over 5. Minus, minus is plus 0 0.568 times SX, which is 27 over 5. So what does that equal? 6. Point 6. 0, 06. So, 0, 07. Yeah. This, uh, I think this is a positive over a positive, wasn't it? Or was it a negative over a negative? Yeah. Should it be a positive for the A? Yeah. Well, I don't know, actually, the denominator could have been negative because 27 squared is probably bigger than 5 times 181. Because 25 squared is 625, yeah, which is more than... Is it? No, it's actually the other way. It's okay. positive, so it should be positive. Is A positive or negative? It's negative. Negative. The denominator is positive. And the, oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Right, continue. Do you have those two values for A and B? We don't need SYY? Yeah, we don't need it. Uh, which one? Oh, SYY. We don't need it for this calculation. We'll need it for another calculation, yeah. Uh, there's another thing that we're going to do. Uh, maybe actually next time. Uh, but usually what happens in the exam, not always, but usually they, act, they provide you with these S values in the question to save you time. So you're not wasting time adding them up. So in the exam question, they'll often give you those values with the table. So that saves a lot of time. Right, can I scroll down? No. No? Okay. Am um, I just waiting for one person? MJ, are you writing too? Ah, so now I'm just waiting for one person. Pressure's on now. Okay. Right. Um, so, what did we say was on the Y? If we look at the formula Y equals A plus BX, what's on the Y? We said uh, inflation. So, inflation equals, what did we say the A was? And the B? 
stupid and uh, no, okay, sorry, hang on, spike my tongue. Uh, the uh, I forgot. The British system does it different to the American system. They have the letters backwards, so it doesn't change any of our calculations. It's just instead of a plus b x, it's a x plus b. But in the American textbooks, it's the other way around. A x plus b. Yeah, I know. No. no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. And by the way, uh, Mo, when you go on to university, it will be the way I have it. So it's only for this class right now that it's backwards, if that confuses you, if you're looking up other books. Okay? Because you know it's backwards because um, when we look at the graph, the slope is negative. So the negative one should have been the A. So uh, we'll just fix that up. It's Y equals AX plus B. Again, don't worry because that's in the formula book, I think. It says y equals ax plus b, so you won't mix it up in the exam then. Leave it the opposite to it, we use a y. Yeah, because it's in the formula book as y equals ax plus b. Yeah? Yeah, I just called them the wrong way in the picture. Okay, so inflation equals, uh, what was the a? Minus 0. Point 5, 6, 8 times X, and what's X? Uh, unemployment. unemployment plus B, and what was B? 6.07. So let's draw that. Uh, inflation, unemployment. Where does it cross the Y axis? 6.07. So if I go up to 10, that would be like about here. Okay. Also, uh, can you calculate for me, please, guys, where it crosses the x-axis? Can you calculate where it crosses the x-axis? You make inflation zero. Yeah. So that will be like, what, about 10 or something? Uh, 10.6866. Okay, so if 10 is there, it'd be something like here. And it goes down. Now, um, that would be the absolute best fit here. We can't improve on this. It fits it the best. Some of the points will be above it. Some of the points will be below it. But it fits it as best as is possible. Do we not have to do the average? Not for this one. Well, you kind of did the average already when you did the SX and the XY. It's included in the formula. So like the formula sort of takes that into account. So the formula will make the line go through the average automatically. Okay. Yes? Sir, if it was the other way, that if the graph was an inverse, then it would be a negative x-axis? If it was I on the X? Yeah. yeah. Then, no, if, if it wasn't inverse, if the because the only reason why it's, it's, it's inverse is going like that, high to low. Yeah. But if it was the other way, then the x-axis would become negative. Uh, like the x-intercept, sorry. It would, be, uh, would be negative always. No. No? No. I don't fully know what you're asking, but I feel like the answer is no. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, yes? Uh, there is still some you know, variability because you only have two points and you just have to draw. No, know? I know. No, no, listen, 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 listen. This is the line that fits the a point as best is possible. Yeah, that's There is no variability. That's not my question. My question but, is but you opened up with there's still some variability. I'm first correcting you, there's no variability. Okay, Continue. So it, uh, would they check if it crosses the, the, uh, the, the point of the averages? No, they won't check that. No. They won't check that. Uh, okay. So continuing, uh, we have a process now for calculating the line which fits it as best as possible. And then after they do this, they'll ask you some questions on it. So typical question might be something like, uh, oh, can I just mark in what were the values that I had for unemployment? Between what numbers? Between? Oh, five. Um, six and one and six. One and six. Oh, good grief. Just 
Two For what? For unemployment. So unemployment kind of covers all of this. Yeah. And inflation? Uh, one and six. Okay, so, so the, the points would have been somewhere like, like here. Yeah. Okay, great. So the advantage of... I'm Jared. If I see that phone again, you will not see it again. Okay? Clear? Yeah? Tamam? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> right. As I was saying, the advantage of using this line is that you can calculate inflation for unemployment values that you don't have. So, for example, what was the biggest unemployment value in your data set? It was 10. Okay. And what was the smallest? Two. So one question that you might ask is, what might I be if the unemployment was 1%? So what you can do is take 1 and sub it into this formula. So you will get I equals minus 0 0.568 times 1 plus 6.07. So what's that? 5.502. Yeah. 5 so 5.5 then. Yeah. So to answer the first question here, you would estimate that the unemployment, uh, the inflation would be 5.5% if unemployment fell to 1%. Okay. Now, another question that they might ask you, they might ask you to interpret the, what, what is the meaning of the minus five, 0 0.568? So like how do you interpret that? What's the meaning of it? So you need to think about what the slope of a line means. True, but not here. So remember, slope means um, if you come out one unit, how far up or down you go. So because it's a negative, we go down. down. So if we move out one unit, then we drop 0.568 units. If we put this into the language of um, the question, what we would say is a 1% increase in unemployment would result in a 0.568% decrease in inflation. You're putting it into the language of the question. Yeah, yeah. But you just have to put in the words of the question. So what you would say here for C is a 1%, a one unit increase in U results in a 0.568% decrease I'm using capitals. Decrease in inflation. You know, because you come out one and you go down 0.568. At D, another question they might ask you, similar, is they might say, what is the meaning of the 6.07? So what is the meaning of the 6.07? Point oh seven. So, how would you interpret the uh, six point oh seven? When unemployment when is zero, when there is no unemployment. Yeah. Should be no, no, you have it completely backwards. Yeah. When everyone is employed, inflation would be six point oh seven. So, in full employment inflation would be 6.07 so you don't mention unemployment I know you could say in no unemployment yeah can we say one um, see can we say an increase of 0.568% I know no 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 now the, the, the sentence structure is always a one unit change results in a blank change in the Y. So don't, don't vary from this structure. Me or them? One of them, okay. 
So don't deviate from that structure of the sentence. It's, it's the same. Oh, I know it's the same. I know it's the same, but there's a standard sentence structure. It's not wrong. It's just not standard. B. Oh, sorry, I, I mislabeled there. That is the answer for B. Sorry, yeah, 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 sorry. C. Okay, one thing they could ask you still on this. So they could ask you to plot. We did that. They could ask you to calculate the A and the B. We did that. They can ask you to, in, to predict. So, for example, here, predict the inflation if the unemployment is 1%. We did that. They could ask you to interpret this number and this number here. So the last thing they can ask you, um, I'll give you an example, D here. They might say something like, um, 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 could we extend this graph past 10%? Uh, actually, let's say something like 11% unemployment and um, beyond 0% unemployment in the other direction. So let's deal with the first one. Could we extend this graph past 11% unemployment? So would it be correct to look at what the graph is doing over here? What do we think? Why not? You can. You can. You can. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. So, for example, if we put in a value of 11, we'll get a negative i. Of course you can. That means prices are decreasing. Shops don't only increase their price, they sometimes decrease their price. Not in this thing. <laughs> sometimes it's possible, though. Okay. So, the answer is. For the first part, could we extend this graph past 11%? The answer is yes, but you must always give a condition though. You say yes, however, so you have to give a sort of a, a warning or a condition. What might be the problem if we extend it too far beyond? So the problem is yes, however, but we do not know if the graph is still linear. You know, because sometimes you know you have a graph and it might look linear at the beginning. Like you see this in biology. Yeah. You know, it, it starts off linear and then what happens? It curves. Now that could happen here, we don't know because we don't have any data for beyond eleven percent. Yeah, but that equation is only valid for the area that we have for the data for. If we extend it too far beyond the data, we might be uh, reaching a conclusion that's not valid. Like, think about the biology. Imagine in the biology experiment you only had data at the beginning when it's a straight line. You might say, well, it'll continue being a straight line. I'm like, well, no, because if you get more data points, you might discover it will fall off. Okay? So in the exam, they want to see usually for one mark the student understanding that there's limitations. There's limitations. And usually the limitation is you can only be close to the data and not too far beyond it. Okay? Last thing here is what about 0%? So could we look at uh, the inflation when we're going left here on the graph? Yeah, exactly. So in that case, it's no. So the answer for this one is no, you can't. Because this is a case where it's not possible for that one to be negative. It has to begin at zero. Yeah? Like think about it, you know, if I said unemployment was 1%, that means in 100 people, one person doesn't have a job. If I said it was minus 1%, then that means in a group of 100 people, 101 people are working. <laughs> not this. Uh, okay, so uh, the most important thing here is the formulas which are in the formula book. So just for the last uh, couple of minutes, I just want you to do one of these calculations. Let's see. 
Um, well, yeah, give question one a try. I just asked you to calculate the S's. Yeah. No, no, that wouldn't do it, but you could justify it because you could have a situation where, for example, you have a group of 100 people, um, all of them have a job, but there's 101 people working, so that additional person is undocumented worker. So you might have a record, you know, if you perhaps you look and you say, I have issued 100 work visas and I have 100 people working, then that's full employment. If you issued 100 visas, but you have 101 people working on your construction site, then you have a negative 1% then in that case. Actually, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's possible. The way I thought about it is, if you look at it within the community, they usually don't consider the youth as unemployed, like, you're cont like people are 14, 15. But if they are employed, yeah. they would still be uh, documented in the yeah, well, you have a problem if your criteria is different for how you count. So, for example, in your community, if you count, if you count everybody, and then when looking at unemployment, you you either include or exclude a group, then you're not counting the same things the same way. Yeah. You know, so this is how you could get things like negative percent. You know, so like another example might be you might look at how many people are over 18, and then you might look at how many people are working, and you might have more people working, but that's because Maybe the people under 18 aren't supposed to work or something like that. Yeah, exactly. But because this is a science and not an economics exam, they would never expect a student to have that level of insight.